Jeannie's podcast. Jeannie's Rubber Boots podcast. We go and sit and relax and tell you all sorts of stories. Mm-hmm. Talk about life and little sports. You know we're gonna play some games. And if nothing else, you know we're gonna have a laugh. my friends hello i uh i'm a mess yes i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> i uh am sleeping uh so i go to bed now at 7 p.m yes and I what time up. is that in africa uh that would be 3 a.m Ooh, so a bit of a you're a bit of a uh, uh-huh. late night owl in africa and then i wake up at 2 a.m so that which is, is 10 a.m 10 a.m Ooh, mm, a little bit of sleep in, in there what are you a teenager now <laughs> Uh. <laughs> and then I, uh, the first day, it was kind of exciting because it was very productive for me. I woke up at two, and uh, Brooksy had already bailed from the bed. I guess that's what I'm saying, Brooksy. Oh, because there was the Gracie was really tired, and we we're trying to get her sleep because she had to get back to school the next day. So the mm. dogs were in the bed, the dogs were snoring. So Brooksy mm. just left me. She yeah. went up and left me, and then she left me for the entire night last night. Ooh, so now issues. it's becoming a trend, perhaps. Mm. Uh. Uh, um, she didn't want to be up because then I got up and was just on the computer and writing my book at like 2 a.m. I got like five hours of book stuff done. That's but good. It, nice. But um, now I'm a disaster. No. Yeah. It's not yeah. going to help your prime time job. Mm. Uh, welcome back to, oh, uh, you know what? I'm not going to bury the lead here. Before we get to Ethiopia and uh, had an incredible trip there, um, perhaps the most shocking development in the four-year history mm. of the Rubber Boots podcast. Do you know what I'm talking about at all? No, no idea. idea. A mind-boggling development that will shake this pod to its roots. He's, Why is that did, fair, Crystal? I'm a little, I'm a little concerned. Why do I feel like this has are, to do with me? I think you're underselling it a little. Oh people God. are like, it I'm, is, I'm actually nervous. I'm sweating. My, it, my hands are sweating. No, none of you are getting fired or oh. anything. It's the single greatest development. Oh, great. Oh. Greatest or... Worst? Disturbing, oh. interesting, oh my God. fascinating. Fa- this is, you're killing me here. Yes. I like interesting. Huh. All right. So I'll just give you a little bit of background uh, before I uh, shout out to a, a bunch of our friends on the Twitter who alerted me to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is another podcast uh, called My Favorite Murder. Whoa. Okay. Extremely popular podcast in the States. I think it's one of the more popular podcasts in... Well, in uh, people in, like the murder. In North America. Judging from the crossover amount of people who wrote us on the Twitter who listened to my favorite murder. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. Two ladies who I, I think they, at some point they talked about murder, but now they just talk about other crap like us. Uh-huh. So uh, it started with Katie Lynn. Um, Katie wrote me, and she actually wrote my favorite murder and said... Uh, you're not going to believe it. Basically, she said, I never do this, but I'm calling out the story that you had on your podcast, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to give away too many details. Um, Jamie Steinborn said, oh, my God, you have to listen to my favorite murder, Minnesota 157. Okay. Um, on it on. Hey, James Duffy, listen to my favorite murder. You won't believe it. On, and that was uh, Lucas. So... Several of these messages. Yes. So uh, I'm just going to play it for my favorite murder. Does mini pods where they just do viewer mail. Okay. All right. Here is the viewer mail uh, as referred to. Rubber boot man creep alert is the subject line. Oh great. Hi. <laughs> I'm just writing to tell you about a creepy phone call I used to get at work many years ago. I live in Canada and I started working for a national airline in 2000 as a reservations call center agent. Obviously, my colleagues and I have spoken to many a creep over the years, but by far the most legendary was a guy we called the rubber boot man. Mm. He spoke in a high pitched baby like voice. He'd say, hey, how are you? Is it waning where you are? No. Are you wearing your rubber boots? (laughs) Do you like to splash in puddles? I'm reading it as it's written. It's so good. Then he'd ask, do you like the dunk tank? Do you like the dunk tank? (laughs) What the f*** is the most specific fetish of all time? Okay. Do you like the dunk tank? What happens when you fall in the dunk tank? Ultimately, oh my god! <laughs> ultimately, he wanted us to say we'd get wet <gasps> if we fell into the dunk tank Ew. or splashed in the puddles. Sometimes he'd ask if we liked wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> 
not not sure where the convo was supposed to end up. <laughs> he called for years and then suddenly stopped. I wonder if he's still alive. I don't speak to the public much anymore, thank the good Lord. <laughs> so I'm sure so I'm not sure if the creeps still call these days or what. People have probably moved on to even grosser things. Yeah. So true. Anyways, if you work in a call center and there's a weirdo on the line, hang the f*** up or keep them on if it's close to the end of your shift, whatever gets you through. Wow. So it's got to be the same guy. It, it must be. Well, it's got to be. I mean, some some people thought that uh, this person who wrote in just stole our my story. But I don't, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. No, 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 no. I think remember... Uh, I think I remember, and maybe maybe we discussed this in season one, or maybe just people wrote to me. At some point in time when I told the Rubber Boots guy story, somebody wrote me and said that this guy was legendary uh, at one of the call centers somewhere out west with Bell or okay. Rogers or something wow. or Shaw that this guy had called. So clearly he called <laughs> a lot of people. Um, he never asked me if I liked wrestling, I don't think. Um, and I, and I don't think like they made it sound like it was sexual. Like this guy had a creepy, he clearly had a fetish. It's definitely yeah. sexual. You think so? Uh, for sure. But did he ever ask you if you've been <laughs> in a puddle? <laughs> yeah. I wow. guess he may have. I don't You're remember. You're so innocent. <laughs> but the frequency with which he called me, yeah. as I've told you guys before, was, you know, every night for two years. But were you years. the only no. person at CJ? No, Carolyn Waldo, uh, okay. former double Olympic gold medalist yeah. in synchronized swimming. She would get the rubber boots guy to call too, but she would she would just hang up on him, I think, most of the yeah. time. I think uh, the late Billy Patterson, another sportscaster before he passed away. So it was the sportscasters he he. It was always the sportscasters sports okay. that, he, that he would call. I mean, unless, I guess I never asked the news people, but... Uh, but he he would call me every night, and so did he. How many people did he call? Oh, a lot. Right. I think I think when people got called display, it really shut him down. <laughs> and how long did this last? Well, I don't know, but is he still alive? That's what I want to know. Well, we're talking. What's the motivation? Eighty right? no, so early nineties. We're talking mid nineties that he called me. So I always thought he was young. In, yeah. in my head, I always thought he was. Did you picture him? I pictured him as like thirty. 30. You know, just kind of a guy living in a basement apartment or something yeah. like that or in his parents' basement. And uh, so in that case, if he was 30, I was around 30. No, I wouldn't have been in the 90s. I was a little younger. But so he would still, yeah, he'd be, you know, mid-50s or something like that, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. Have we Have we reached out to the My Favorite Murder people? I, I will be reaching out to them. I'm thinking maybe they could help us out. They have experience in murder mysteries. Yes. Maybe they can track this guy down. Yes, absolutely. Right. And absolutely. also... They're probably uh, a little more resourceful than we are. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> do, do they, yeah, we haven't tried. <laughs> do they know? I wonder if they've read their mentions because several people would uh, you know, copy at them and us in these replies. They probably think it's his podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're probably very creeped out, especially once they hear the song. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, no. we have to send them the song. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> they'll yeah. be like, they'll, they will literally be like, what the? Well, well, imagine yeah. you're and the, the Elton- rubber boots guy. <laughs> 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 it all maybe comes we, crashing down. Maybe yeah. we shouldn't send them the song. Yeah. Anyway, the Elton Ron version. Uh, that, yeah. that was a... Uh, wow, that's crazy. Thank you to all the people I mentioned who sent this to me. That's, fa- that's that, fantastic. That was... Uh, uh, you're wearing your rubber yeah. boots tonight? Well, maybe there's still hope we can find him. Maybe it is the guy that's been wandering the streets of Toronto that you and several other people... Rubber boots. Who says, I hate rubber... Well, no, but he, this guy loved rubber but boots. But yeah. if it abruptly stopped at some point, maybe he got arrested. Or he's dead. <laughs> I hate to say it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're ever going to find him. No. Do you think some guy's going to come forward and well, say... It, we, it, 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 we can set up a sting <laughs> operation hey, at a dunk tank. Hey, guys, I heard you talking about me. It is, it's me. I'm the guy. <laughs> I'm the guy. I'm surprised I'm, someone hasn't pretended to be the rubber boots yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's going to happen now. I watch. used to get I used to get posts from uh, from like college people who would be out in bars who would, you know, take selfie videos of themselves saying, hey, are you wearing your rubber boots? And yeah. I, that used to be a weekly occurrence for me. Uh, it's calmed down. I guess our demo's gotten a little older. Uh, let's get to the week that was. Let's discuss the week that was with James Dunning and the Rebel Boots Podcast Crew. Because I had an eventful week, I will ask Lester first how it was You his know week. what? My week was great. Thank you very much. I can't complain. Um, yeah, it was good. 
Yeah, I, well, I, I was going to say, uh, th- there's, a, you know, I, you know, I'm the guy that's supposed to be all serious, and I don't mean to be serious in the sense that I want to bring the thing down, but definitely we were all shocked by the news about Neil Peart's mm-hmm. passing. Neil, Neil Peart, excuse me, yeah, is passing, and uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, uh, as a musician, you know, I grew up with guys and and, and that idolize this man, mm-hmm. and I was never a big Rush guy, but. You know, it's one of those things for sure that when you when you think about it, you where were you when you heard? And I was just floored last week. It was funny. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I Love You Man was on. Sid and I have gotten pretty good at a couple of Rush songs. What do you mean? Like fast-paced rock? No, like Rush. Like the band Rush. Uh, which, you know, they yeah. love. They love yeah. all, the, they, all the Rush. Play in the bass, man. Rush, yeah. yeah. Slap at the bass, Slap at the bass, Slap at the, the, the bass, bass you know, so, yeah. Slap the bass. And they go to the Rush show, show so I think he was a big golfer. Too, uh, you know, by the way. Yeah, definitely a motorcyclist. Yeah. yeah. That was his big thing, his riding. Did you see the documentary that yes. was out a couple years ago? It was yes. fantastic. You know, yeah. that's when I fell in love with him, actually. I was never a real big Rush guy. I was never guy. a Rush guy either. But, but I, like, the this, this respect I gained for them, just watching that thing was amazing. And he was a very, very quiet man. In fact, he, as they, they've said now, he's been sick for, for, had been sick for quite some time. In typical Neil Peart fashion, yeah. he doesn't want to be a fuss. He doesn't want anybody to know. I had know? the hardest time back in the early days of the NHL on TSN when we did that, we had the song. Yes. Um, and Neil did the song. He did the hockey song. Yep. Course, yes. Right? Yep. Yes. And uh, we had to introduce it. We played it all year long. Every third game, we would play that song. And I, I it was, everybody called him Neil Pert. Yes. And we were told it was here. Here. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I, I had the hardest time every time. All right. Let's hear the our theme by Neil. Whenever Peart. I hear someone say his name, I always think they're saying it wrong. I know. Just I'm like, uh, which way are you saying it? <laughs> yes, right. I know. Uh, well, well said, Lester. Uh, how was your week, Stoff? Everything good? Well, with you away, Jimmy, I was devastated. I'm but. sure you were. <laughs> you got I through got it through okay? It, yeah. Are you rubbing your rubber boots? <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad about last week's episode because uh, you were kind enough, you and Jay and Dan, to have me on the Jay and Dan podcast, and uh, they ended up asking me about all the same stuff that we talked about on our podcast. Yeah, it was a bit of a spoiler. <laughs> and then their podcast comes out, what, a, a day or two before our podcast, so... Uh, Apologies for that if you listen to both the Jay and Dan and uh, myself. Things I was, happen. I was a little repetitive. What are you Puffy, your week okay? The hockey's going all right? The yeah, kids well, are still... I'm leaving for Ottawa. Oh, today? In a uh, matter of hours. Yeah, oh. What time's it? Two? We're on so, wheels up at five. Okay, so you're going to pick up the kids and you're going big tourney. Big tourney in Ottawa. We're going to the Sens game. Are you working the Sens game Saturday? Uh, I am. Sens you, Flames. Keep, I'll after. be there with the children. Can you, you me give me a guys... shout out? Yeah, can you... Sh- we'll Every sh- couple minutes. <laughs> Why don't we do every, every power play? Every yeah. crowd cutaway. We'll tell Sam Cicerello, who's yeah. the producer yeah. of just the Senators game, just Sammy. to shoot Puffy. And, and his... I'll do like different funny things. Different funny dances? Yeah. yeah. Do you know where you're sitting? <laughs> uh, no. But well, I'll let tell Sammy us the know. section. Let yeah, Sammy let Sammy know. That's awesome. Yeah, did you pay for these up, tickets or were they course, a TSN? No, not TSN. Special. They did not help us at all. Oh. <laughs> the <laughs> NHL. Oh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> All right, your uh, once again, sources. your wife yeah. comes through and you are uh, uh, failure. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're taking a team bus. Oh, that's oh, always nice. Fun. It's gonna be fun. You know what? Auto was a good distance for that too because I did ton of those trips as a as a hockey parent and a soccer parent, and the the four or five hours is about perfect. Yeah, you take the like the thirteen hour. That one, wouldn't be fun. One time, our bus broke down on the way oh, to Cleveland, no. Ohio. Oh. And then we had to wait about, uh, you know, they had to send another bus from Toronto. Oh, oh no. It was not fun. Well, one, break- thing, one thing about those Sens games, though, is there's plenty of room to stretch out. Uh, no, it's like cause it, because of the <laughs> tournament. Oh, it's, it's crowded. A, it's going to be a sold out Is this show. the Sens what? International one at the Sportsplex? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah that's, a bi- that's a big tournament. Is it? Yeah, it's a good tournament. We played in the exact I'm talking about one. the Sens game. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. but all the oh. kids are going. Oh, right, right, yeah, right. I so see, it's going to be sold out. So, Puff, what are the uh, odds for your kids to win outright? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean <laughs> well, Barrett might take a dive if it pays well enough. <laughs> if there were, if you were allowed to bet on your children's hockey games, would you? Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, I would love the you honesty. ever bet against them? If I knew they were going to lose, <laughs> that's if what I'm knew, saying. If I knew, like, there was like several sleepovers the night before between the teams, you would bet against your children. <laughs> It depends what the money pays. <laughs> wow. But if the line was good. <laughs> Speaking of gambling, two guys uh-huh. from this building, mm-hmm. Steve Hall, George Nasios, bet on Austin Matthews to get a hat trick against, who was the other night? New Jersey? New Doubles. Jersey. Really? They, and they both hit 17 to 1. <laughs> wow. wow. What did they bet? Like 20? Uh, they didn't bet. I don't know how much. Not Have that they been much, betting that all year? No, that was like the first time they had bet it. Wow. And like, he hadn't had a hat trick since the first since game the first of his career. Game. That's right. And I'm like, why would you 
bet that, and they both hit it. It was. Amazing. And are they addicts like you are? Where uh, they, Steve they get. Hall has entered a dark place. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, a, his movie. He's about the forty-five minute mark of his movie. <laughs> Steve Hall is uh, a guy who edits a lot he, of the stuff that you see stuff, yeah. on uh, TSN Hockey. Yeah. Nasios is a producer, producer for a sports. Center, does an yeah. excellent job. He also both enjoys both the guys. gambling. So I was in Ethiopia for a week. As I mentioned, my uh, sleep uh, disorder. It was. Um, I know Lester asked me on the way into the studio what what it was like, and it's a, that's a complicated answer. I, I I I say it was an amazing trip, which it was, but it was it's complicated the emotions, right? Because you you one it's heart your heart gets broken like a million times, and then you get inspired a bunch of times, and it's uh, yeah to see that level of poverty and that um, volume of poverty was, like, was it a lot different from the other two trips? Yes. For, I for mean, no, no the, I mean, we went in Nicaragua and Paraguay. We saw that Nicaragua was kind of a city slums trip, okay. mm. which was also, yeah, it, it was, but it was sort of in a confined area where Ethiopia, you saw it in the city. I mean, Abbas, the city we we're in, Addis, excuse me, uh, there's 10 million people and there's just people everywhere, everywhere. There's just people like you really? stop at a, I was going to say a stoplight, but there's hardly any stoplights there. It's in the city? crazy traffic. Oh, yeah, just traffic circles everywhere, and there's no rules, and it's just complete and utter wow. mayhem. Thank goodness I didn't drive. But there's just people everywhere. But we mm. you know, we spent most of our time in the country. Uh, got to meet our my little sponsored child. I, I posted that, a lot of stuff, pictures. so you guys yeah. probably nice. saw that. Yeah, I won't re- cool. repeat all that, but that was incredibly cool, particularly for Gracie. As I said online, like she just completely fell in love with Gracie. She was kind of cold to me at the beginning because I was just a scary white guy. <laughs> and But she warmed up to me after. I brought yeah. these like TSN Frisbees and balls, and we were all playing. And uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing. I, I, I won't talk too much about uh, the stuff that I already shared online, um, but it was uh, Children Believe is the organization. I don't ever hard sell... Uh, stuff to people but if you've ever thought about sponsoring a child it's uh, an amazing organization I saw the schools they've built I met a, f- a guy who uh, named Abraham who was a I think I talked last week about a dentist I ended up meeting a veterinarian mm-hmm. who uh, you know grew up in absolute poverty but uh, children believe helped him pay his way through school becomes a veterinarian so we, we go to this place it's like the uh, the town cattle uh trade or whatever mm-hmm. cattle market yeah so it's just cows and goats and sheeps everywhere and they're yeah. just selling them back and forth to yeah. each other and he's the vet and it's not like the vet where you bring your cat in fact there's no cats and dogs that get brought to the vet no it's just uh cows and sheeps and goats <laughs> and there's no appointments yeah you just show so up when we got there he's standing sitting by himself and there's no people there and i go wow we, how are we going to shoot this because we're trying to shoot a story that yeah to put on the children believe website and then a guy walks up with a cow, and in 10 minutes, there's 30 people lined up with their cows and their goats and their sheep and their horses, and they're all injured in some way, and he's firing away, and he's got the, what do you call the thing that you listen to their heartbeats? Oh, yeah, yeah. and stethoscope. Oh, and stethoscope. and he gets, then he gets a prescription, and he fires it into the guy, and off they walk with their horse. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's so crazy. The whole thing is, is so overwhelming how different their world is than yeah. us, right? It's just... It's mind-boggling. It's, but, uh, it's much simpler, though, right? Well, here's the thing. And I kept... You have all this sympathy. Mm-hmm. I kept saying all the time, how do these people live? Mm-hmm. And you feel so... There's this. You're overwhelmed with sympathy and pity. Mm-hmm. And then I started to think to myself and go, I, I'm, you know, they don't... First of all, they don't... I don't know that they envy what we have or they want what we oh, have. Mm-hmm. They just live... A, that was the one thing I left with more than anything else. And I said it online is that uh, how happy... They are without having anything. Well, they, but they have mm. all they need for the most part yeah. in, in a certain way, right? Well, like, I they, mean, it's weird. Maybe they pity you because you have to go to go to work every exactly. day, right? Exactly. It's family. Like, it's about fa- it's you know it's about getting enough food to put on the table every night. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that there's a table. Um, it's about family, you know, religion. The family thing's interesting. It was first I I kept seeing guys holding hands, and I thought, wow, Africa's come a long way because I didn't think it was forward coming with uh, you know homosexuals, homosexuals or lesbians, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then I finally said, I said, wow, I'm really happy that they're so progressive with uh, homosexuality. And my cameraman guy who's been there multiple times said, mm. no, man, that's just, the, that's what friends do. Yeah. They just walk down the street, like 30-year-old guys, 20-year-old guys, they all hold hands or have their arms around each other the whole really? time. Wow. That's the way they should. And it's, just, it's not sexual. It's just no, it's the closeness of, yeah. that's what you do. That's how you yeah. show affection to a friend. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, in Puffy, that country. Puffy, don't touch me, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I, I ate a lot of, uh, <laughs> yeah, you what? take, you eat with your fingers and you have this ajira bread, which is amazing, and you dip it in you know, meat or whatever. I had a lot of that. I had to drink coffee because the coffee, Ethiopian coffee is like the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And yes, everywhere yes. you go, they greet you with coffee. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have incense burning. It always smells fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a couple other weird things, like the government housing. Imagine, okay, for whatever Canadian city you're listening to this in or American city, Drive, you know, a half an hour outside your city uh, to where it's just flat land. If you're on the prairies or whatever, where yeah. it's just land. Uh, and so that's where all the government housing is, and it's endless. So you have, so drive, let's say in Toronto, we drive up to King or whatever, where it's all yep. farmland, right? Then all of a sudden, so you're 20, 20 minutes out of the city, and there's 115-story apartment buildings. What? Really? All exactly the same, and that's where everybody lives. And I'm sure there's, there's, you know, they're very simple, nothing to them. But that, it's just you're driving out in the middle of nowhere, and there's all these apartment buildings. That's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, something else. And then I saw a hippo. You saw, I saw a bunch I of hippos. Now, those picture. are very dangerous, Jimmy. Yeah, yes, I know. I was uh, heard about that afterwards. We were pretty safe, though, because <laughs> the guy commanding the boat, he knew about the hippos. But he kind of yeah. looked like he was... He, that hippo, he blood. did look like he wanted to eat. Yeah, he oh, did want like hippos. Hey, I have a quick question. Mm-hmm. Just musically. Mm-hmm. What, what was going on music-wise in, 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 in uh, Ethiopia? Did you did you hear anything? Like, did, Drake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, different. And I didn't hear any sort of popular music. It was no, all, no, no. all Ethiopian music. And yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah. You know, okay. a lot of... There's, there's an Arab influence there. Yeah. So there was a lot of Lots that. Lots of drums, though? Um, yeah, definitely. Okay. Lots of drums. Yeah. And people always walking around with drums. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. so drums everywhere. Cool. Uh, what else? Uh, the chanting, the, uh, I guess it was Sunday, one place, and I woke up. Um, we went the last day up to this place a little bit north uh, to explore, and uh, you could hear the chants from the mosques mm. at start at 3 a.m., wow. Really? And like deafening noise. I guess they, I don't know if they send it through speakers or you can just hear everybody. Oh yeah. I have to tell you, I got, we went to an Ethiopian restaurant, Mm -hmm. which uh, was a real traditional Ethiopian restaurant. So full of Ethiopians. Yes. And there was a show going on. So all these dancers, I'll post this, I guess on our, our site. I need Uh to get the proper video, but they called me up on stage. So at some point, first of all, they dance very much with their shoulders. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. I know. Africans, right? Mm. I'm trying to do it right now. It's just like, should be Instagramming live yeah. this. It's all a lot of shoulder <laughs> movements. And so then a few of them came through the crowd and they were trying to pick up people at their tables to get mm-hmm. them to dance. Mm-hmm. And I was one of the guys I got up and everybody else at my table was too shy. So I was trying to do it. Yeah. And I don't know if they thought I was either good or hysterically bad. Yes. But then at the end, they called me up on stage to be I, like the guy. Wow. And mm-hmm. we went through a whole routine. I had no idea what she was saying. It was a woman and yes. she would talk to the crowd and then she would get me to, like we warmed up and then she'd get me to imitate all her dance moves. Yeah. And and her singing moves, yeah, funky yeah. African stuff. Road stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought I was really Ooh. good. Were you? You guys will just decide for yourselves. I will post the <laughs> post video it and then make on a little Instagram. Comment. Although I still haven't posted the shot of me as a little dressed up as a little girl. Now, uh, would, did Gracie have a good time? Awesome time, and she was uh, she was spectacular because it's not easy. No, it's not easy to see this stuff. It's not easy travel. Uh, it's not easy to, you know, get to all these places. And uh, I thought she was unbelievable, and she just fell in love with this little girl as the little girl fell in love with her. So That's that awesome. was an amazing thing to see. I think, I think it was a, you know, life-changing might be a, uh, a oh, over, sure overused a phrase, but I think it... impact, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Like I said, you grow up in Aurora. What do you know, yeah. right? Also, gentlemen, it's uh, in uh, Ethiopia, it's 2013, which I did not know until halfway through the trip. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> like, how is that possible? I flew down and they said, oh, it's 2020. it was Christmas. Yeah, I got there the day after Christmas. And so then they kept what? celebrating Christmas. You, oh, you said about music. Mm-hmm. They kept playing everywhere, like in the malls and such, they were playing mm-hmm. Christmas carols. Christmas carols. Oh, yeah. Like Christmas. Silent Night and stuff. Really? Just the musical versions. Wow, of instrumental really? stuff. Wow. Yeah, so very strange. But And the malls, by the way, that's one other thing. So the malls, there was a couple of malls near our hotel. We stayed in the city and would drive out to the country. Um, so imagine, I'm trying to, um, the malls are like an apartment building. Okay. So there's no stretching, sweeping malls. And they just go, so you walk a floor and there might be four stores yeah. and then you walk up the next floor and it's in a square and it's open down the middle. Okay. So imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So it's open down the middle and it's all perimeter. So it's balconies, but there's only like three stores on every, <laughs> on every floor. 
You get in shape doing that it one. Is the, yeah. uh, it's just such a strange, wonderful place. So, yeah, it's 2013. Uh, how so? Um, is this like one of those lost planes? <laughs> <laughs> they do uh, the calendar. I just, uh, I'm not smart enough, as you know, to know this stuff. And I only found out when I was there that it was 2013. But the, I, I, I wrote something down here. The o- Ethiopian calendar has 12 months of 30 days, each plus five or six epagomino days, which compri- comprise a 13th month. Uh, the Ethiopian months begin on the same days as those of the Coptic calendar, but their names are in years. So they add one day every four years, with the exception of August 29th. Okay, it's, it's really complicated, but the bottom line is when you do the math, it comes up that it's uh, seven years behind us. Really? And it's going to only get further behind? Yeah, as we, as we go, it'll get further behind. I thought I could do a, you want to do a, I thought I could do a hypothetical. Let's do a, let's do a Puffy's Hypothetical brought to you by Jimmy. Puffy's Hypotheticals, who really gives a crap? All the ladies want to hear is the Rod Smith recap. Blah, 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 blah. Roddy is the best, the best. Okay, so uh, Puffy's Hypotheticals is brought to you by our friends at idrinkcoffee.com. And I did actually drink a lot of coffee down there. Yes, you did. Are you a coffee guy now? So I told all the guys on my trip, Slavic, that, uh, because they were all, they were into the coffee. And I said, you got to go to idrinkcoffee.com. So I sent about six new customers to idrinkcoffee.com. Perfect. And then I said to all the Ethiopians, you have to go to (laughs) (laughs) idrinkcoffee.com. Now, Stock price going through the roof. I don't, I wouldn't say that I'm a coffee drinker, but it was good there. They put sugar in it if you want. Right, oh, that's basically how they put it. I like the sugar. But it's so, you know, it's so neat how they're doing it. It's just a little fire that they're cooking it on, and there's always a lady who sits by the fire, and then you end up with this little cup of coffee, and you kind of have to have it. It's yeah, culture that you have it. So I had maybe four cups while I was there. Uh, it's not too I don't bad. Know. I don't know. So I'm not addicted yet. Those were the first four cups of coffee in my life. You wow. never had coffee until this? I told you, I never had a cup of coffee. Oh. It was like Lester and the mayonnaise. Yes. I've never had coffee. I've had a sip or two of coffee, but I've never had a coffee. Wow. Never had a coffee at Starbucks. I didn't start drinking never coffee until I was 32. Never had a Tim but, Hortons uh, coffee. Yeah. Never in my life. Wow. You call yourself a Canadian. What was, the, what was the segment we had? Fun facts or whatever is the thing we never uh, haven't done anymore where Lester said he doesn't eat mayonnaise? Yeah. Weird, wild, personal facts. Weird, wild, personal Thank facts, you. Yeah. Thank you for remembering that song. <laughs> Weird, wild, personal facts. <laughs> so, <laughs> the mayonnaise killed the segment. So as soon as I, as soon as I found out it was 2013... <laughs> 2013. Um, I said, would you, if you could change, if you could go back in time, if it really was 2013, what sporting event would you change the outcome of? How's so that for a hypothetical? Since, since 2013. I know the way. I mean, you got to have the, you know, well, there's, there's one Seahawks, obvious. Seahawks, uh, Patriots. Oh, oh on, on the ball the on the two one, yard yeah. line. That's yeah. the one you change, Puffy? Yeah, what about uh, Boston 3 you 1 Toronto? change that? Uh, You're up five, four, one in that game. See that? That's the one I was going to take any of the uh, game sevens for the Leafs. Yeah, yeah. Which would I think last year's game seven would have been better. Well, yeah, because you got a better fi- chance. You got to well, chan- better team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to figure a chance to win the Stanley Cup. Well, yeah. so you can only choose one. What are you choosing? I would choose last. You choose, oh. should choose the Seahawks because then you win a Super Bowl. Yeah, right. Because there's no yeah. guarantee the Leafs could go out in the. Yeah, second they still round. would have to win three more rounds. Right. That's a long. But show. Boston went to the final that year, right? And Boston, 2013, yeah, Boston lost, yeah, last to year they so lost. You to could Chicago. make the argument if you beat Boston. Yeah, but if the Leafs go to the final, Babcock's still the coach. Is he? Not necessarily. Not Not necessarily. Time's gone. Tom, it's 2016. Babcock no, wasn't was the coach. He year. wasn't the coach then. Though. <laughs> no, last year. No, last year he was. Oh, the one. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the. Yeah, I thought you were talking about 2013. Oh, they because, also went to the final that yeah. both years. Just yeah. because you take a team to the Stanley Cup final doesn't mean you, you're. Yeah, still I guess Gerard coach. Gallant. Right. That was exactly where <laughs> what, I was. That was harsh. What a year. Well, it was a very strange year. Seriously. I, I have lots of thoughts, but I'm not going to say it. But for isn't me, it interesting in the year that coaches corner? Dies. Yes. That all the coaches oh, yes. die mm-hmm. along with it. That's very true. That's very good point. Um, we'll leave it there. Um, for me, I would have to go back to game one of the Eastern Conference final, Montreal versus New York what Rangers. Year is that? That's 2014. 14. And that is the year that Carey Price he gets injured. Oh, oh Kreider. Right, the Kreider, Kreider hit him. That SOB. Yes. yes. So do you think they would have. Well, that's the Eastern Conference. Do you think they would have beaten LA to win the Stanley Cup? No chance. Um. Well, probably not. 
Mm. That's a good point. Well, then if, if, if I'm thinking, but they're about in the it, cup final. Well, if I'm thinking about it realistically, then if there's, if I could go back. Well, it's 2010 though. I can't. No, go you can't back. go back. No, okay, okay. So yeah, I'll still, I'll leave it there. No, it's still a good one. Yeah, I mean, you get to a cup final. Yeah, it's yeah. Worth, well, it's I'll take. Listen, it. It, it sets the franchise a lot further ahead than they are now. I think. Right. You, so you think that injury caused Montreal to lose that series? Hundred percent. Oh, hundred percent. That's fair enough. They win that series with Carey Price in that. I was thinking. Uh, I don't have a good answer for this. I didn't really think about it. Oh, <laughs> but uh, probably one of my kids things like, you really? know, Jared lost. I remember a game five to Barry and the year Jared's team was stacked and they would have won the OMHAs or maybe, you know, one of my daughter's soccer finals. Those are the things because yeah. like my Niners weren't really any good. So there's nothing you could have done between no. 2013 and now when they're oh, the best team in sends, the history of the world. Your pesky sends. <laughs> Yeah, but there's, a, there's, run. there's nothing. Remember? Oh, well, that's true. That's actually Remember true. That that's right. I don't Penguins like the Senators. Game? I don't like Jimmy. the Senators. Wow. Jimmy. Just oh, for my, for my parents, it would have been nice for, before my dad died, for the Sens to go to the cup final. Yes. He would have enjoyed that. So, like, but I the Red Blacks won, so that's all you really care. always for your dad. I don't it's not care, for you. Puffy. It's always for your dad. <laughs> mm. Puffy, I don't care about the Sens. <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to tell you that. See, yeah. if I could go back, now that I'm thinking about it, I'd probably go back to our race at Turks and Caicos <laughs> in the water. <laughs> Give myself the W. That was a disaster That was a victory for you. That, that loss will was kick, not a will victory follow me for It was a win. Like, I was way ahead of you, and I just started laughing because he fell. <laughs> oh, my God. It was, it was I blew over. It for the tape. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Those uh, damn snakes. <laughs> yes. yes uh, we whatever. can't go back in time. Guys, I'm sorry to tell you, but it's 2020 in Toronto. I'm in time for things that I saw on Twitter. Freaky pigs, strange chicks, world affairs, polar bears, fake news, nice shoes, big boobs, jack dudes, all of these things and more as I sat on the shitter. Things that I saw on Twitter. Jimmy switching segments too fast. <laughs> well, he's going to fix that in post, hey, you Hey, idiot. leave him alone. He's back in 2013. We don't fix anything <laughs> in post. <laughs> That's right, we don't. Uh, things that I saw on Twitter brought to you by our friends at the Weimara. Uh, man requests trial by combat to settle legal dispute with ex-wife. A Kansas man requests trial by combat <laughs> with Japanese swords. Because it is not outlawed in the U.S., David Ostrom claims in his motion that his wife, ex-wife and her attorney have destroyed him legally, and he <laughs> wants to meet on the field of battle where I will rend their souls from their corporal bodies. Mm. He argued in his motion... I think he suspects the lawyer and his ex-wife are more than just client. <laughs> Trial by combat, guy. he says, has never been explicitly banned or restricted as a right in the United States and was used as recently as 1818 in British courts. Uh, in fairness, not, it's not that recent. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the, uh, he concluded that a concession that Ostrom's ex-wife may choose a champion, her attorney, <laughs> to stand in her stead. <laughs> I love the way this guy this talks. This guy's even. awesome. <laughs> Is he really, though? <laughs> mm, awesome in the worst way. <laughs> uh, a phrase popularized by the HBO fantasy drama Game of Thrones. Yeah, I think this guy so, might be watching a little too much of the old television. But having said that, if they did allow it, that could be a... Would uh, you take that route? With Brooks, yeah, that's where you're Not with Brooks. She's abandoned like, me in my bed. I want to. I want to have flight combat with strapping swords. I think Brooks, she would probably bring in some a ringer. <laughs> I think she would too. <laughs> um, I, would I take that route? I don't. I don't. I don't well, think so. Well, I, I would like to point out something that's very interesting. <laughs> I, that, I, love, oh, I love the preludes to all his I comments. Well, I, I think he says here. He, it's very clear. I will rend their souls from their corporal sick bodies. That's a murder threat. Yeah, it is. Oh, so, well, not not in court though. That's all good and legal. <laughs> yeah. Well, is he quoting? The thing is, is he quoting something from you know some seventeen hundreds? Uh, well, doesn't matter. Legal manuscript. Or doesn't something matter. Or? If I say to if I say to Stoff, you know, I will end you your life, mm-hmm. you know, on on a pub podcast or or something like that or on a mm-hmm. Twitter, it's like serious. you just did. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was. I'm a witness. Wow. <laughs> uh, Spotify has launched a new podcast. Uh, oh. Island Time Sp- oh, okay. <laughs> I, th- I thought it was actually called that. I should read these ahead. Uh, Stoff has prepared this document for us. Island Time spinoff for the pooches. Oh, yes. Spotify has made playlists and a podcast for dogs to listen to um, because they've heard nearly 74% of UK pet owners play music for their animals. Did you uh, download a sa- any samples of what they, uh, they do? No, I, d- I don't think the podcast was out yet. Oh, it's not I got out yet? That, so, yeah. Okay, so when we get it, we can hear some of the music? Absolutely. Uh, I think we should do our own spinoff. Mm-hmm. What would that be? 
the Rubber Dogs podcast. <laughs> <laughs> rough, rough. <laughs> All right, my dogs. I leave the TV on them for them when I leave because they you like. Do. They do Ooh, like to. What be do they consoled. watch? Hold on a second. They like. How do you know they like it? Well, I don't know, but <laughs> they don't I, bark and protest. I think I've heard that dogs like something um, instead of Which, silence, so yeah. they feel like they have company. So you put on your stereo, you put on your TV. You I don't for think the they're dogs. any different than human beings. A lot of people put the TV on just for background noise and. Do you whatever. do that though? I don't. I do, do that. sometimes. I like yeah. the silence. Sometimes See? I do. So maybe your dogs also like the silence. They're like, "Damn it, he's putting that f-ing TV on again." <laughs> <laughs> Someone stop him! I come in. He's got he's got my headphones on. My Beats by Dre. Um, what else? What the hell else here? Tortoise saves own species. Um, oh, I did hear this. One, one singular tortoise on Santa Cruz Island is retiring after fathering eight hundred babies. That's like your show, your buddy's old show. The okay. seed or whatever. The seed, seed yeah, seed, exactly. Seed, seed, right? Uh, would you be willing to make such a sacrifice to save the human yes. race? <laughs> Puffy didn't, yes. even, I didn't even finish the question. Uh, the best is when I heard the story on the radio, I was like, I'm so jealous of that damn tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> all that shell he's been getting all these years. Puffy, if you were the one oh, the to shell. save the human race, <laughs> if it was your seed... That uh, launched the species. Well, my only concern was... Word save is... <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I was worried, like, because there was, I think they were down only a few of them. Right. And now, now there's 800, but this guy is responsible for them all. Right. So now they're all going to be brothers and sisters. Yeah, it's kind of gross. So then are mm. they going to... Uh, Child support, too. The, yeah. payment, the payments are going <laughs> to the roof. So, like, will they be able to... Like, there must like, be lots it? of incest within animals. They don't have a sense about that, do yeah, they? Yeah, I don't know. I, it's hard to say. I would imagine yeah. so, yeah. Mm. Ask your dog if you've seen a, do- a documentary about it on I TV. I love that look. <laughs> like, I would imagine so. <laughs> this has been our... The dirty, dirty once, animals. <laughs> once we launched the dog, rubber dog podcast, we'll know all the answers. <laughs> so imagine if the, uh, oh, if the girls from, um, uh, what's this podcast? Murder or something? Murder. Uh, uh, my favorite my, murder. My favorite, listening, murder. My favorite podcast. They're, my now favorite they're, they're listening to this for the first time because they've heard about the Rubber Boots yeah. podcast. And first like, and last time. we're talking about our animals in. <laughs> Incestuous. <laughs> this has been our Animals Incestuous with Puffy, Stop, Lester, and James, the new hit podcast. Um, if you have any information on whether animals are incestuous, please let us know. An employee fakes flat tire. <laughs> Stoff adds, I take great offense to this because he gets them every day. Some dumbass sent their boss. Did, did you steal this right off the copy? Did it say that? Some dumbass. No, that, boss, those are my words. <laughs> <laughs> Some dumbass sent their boss a photo they got off Google Images as proof they got a flat tire. Upon closer inspection, the photo itself <laughs> is a poorly made Photoshop of a nail pasted on top of a tire. It's also the first Google image that comes up when searching nail and flat tire. <laughs> uh, did, he get, did he get fired? Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't actually <laughs> follow see up any, on the story. <laughs> any sort of uh, follow up on the story. However, I just found it very offensive. Uh, yes, oh, someone in someone my condition suffered many. A flat this is like tire. someone taking a wheelchair for a joyride. <laughs> yes. In my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you ever made up an excuse to skip work? This is interesting. Ooh. Not a TSS. Yeah, not a TSS. So in my, my old previous job. life. Previous life. Uh, CJOH Ottawa. So I'm still young, and you know, I like the party. Mm-hmm. So I might have been 23 or 24, and it was my... No, I must have been 25, because I think Brooksy was involved. That's when I met Brooksy when I was 25, and it was my birthday, and I wanted to go out for my birthday, and I was scheduled to work. Oh. And I did have a knee issue. Mm-hmm. I'd had a minor knee surgery like two days before, but I was walking fine. Yes. Like arthroscopic. Yeah. So I called in and said, I can't get around with my knee. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know why Brooksy let me do this because we went out, like we went out together and then she said, let's go to this bar. And there was like a surprise party for me, (laughs) for like the work people, like Max keeping my boss and a few others had put like a little party on for me. Brooksy. And I, I, wa- I remember walking into the bar, like, you know, <laughs> and then they're, they're all there. And I started like limping right away. I was, I was like the opposite of Kaiser Soze. <laughs> I went from Very like good. perfectly walking to this hard, heavy limp. Oh my God. And I'm like, Brooksy, I, maybe, oh. maybe the truth is I didn't tell Brooksy that I called in sick. Like, yeah, that makes that, sense. Uh, so, uh, yeah, or maybe the car, it must have been. And you a, had no idea that this. this no, it must have been, party. it must have been a day shift or something. Yeah. 
And I'm, and I'm not even sure. I can't even remember if it was for me, frankly, but it was a party that involved my coworkers. Yeah. And she brought me to it. I think it must have been for me. And there I was after calling in sick saying I couldn't walk. <laughs> that was a <laughs> tough one. Did you take any heat for that? Uh, Max didn't even care. Oh, that's a good guy. That's a good, that's a good guy. Very that was good. in the day Max still had like the Mickey under the desk. <laughs> 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 he, was, he was an old school news I'm, guy. So he I was wish the, I lived in those days. Oh, you would have you loved Max, Puffy. If, he was if, the best. If I could inquire about your car uh, stuff, have you uh, found out what's going on with the tires and everything? Air's coming out somehow. That's it? I have that's the same issue. We got. Still yeah. haven't been fixed? No, I mean, they don't have to be replaced. I'm not going to replace them. Yeah. I just keep putting air in them. I got to really work yeah. on uh, McAlpine Ford, my auto sponsor that I do uh, the spots for. I heard for your new you spot. I heard it pretty yeah. funny. Did, was it funny or do you think it was stupid? It was pretty funny. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Made a I, little, I laughed. Do you want to do, can we insert the McAlpine Ford spot with me and Peter Sawyer? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> James Duffy here with my good friend Peter Sawyer from McAlpine Ford in Aurora. Pete and I coach football together, won multiple championships at a very high level. Hmm, that was middle school co-ed flag football, James. Exactly, Pete. <laughs> Elite. Or we, we, would we have inserted it right there? So should I react to it now? What'd you think, Puff? <laughs> Puffy, what, what did you think of my commercial? Better this time, even. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go to uh, a little thing we call Urban Dictionary. What did you want? Urban Dictionary. Yeah, that sounded like some of the Ethiopian music I heard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very heavy on the drums. Has he been stealing? Uh, I think he's uh, been ripping stuff off from me. <laughs> That's why I was so curious oh, about come it. On. You, the, you guys did a little hello? match. Did you hear hello? Hey, did you guys, uh, <laughs> you guys listen to much music over there? Or is there uh, you didn't, Bottom right? Drums? <laughs> Imagine that. I'm just wow. cruising through Ethiopia. <laughs> and tur- turn the up number the- one hey, put song. A to you. Welcome. <laughs> number one song again this week. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey, listen, it's happened. It's listen. You know, very quick, 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 quick aside about that stuff. Right. This is this is uh, South Africa, but the whole thing about you know the whole story about Rodriguez. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. mean that's happened, right? Uh, he was completely. Nobody yeah, but that, nobody about him. But here. nobody was ripping off his music. They were just no, playing no, it. no. But Are what we I'm talking saying about a Rod. <laughs> no, so <laughs> I, I highly recommend a documentary called Searching for Sugar Man. Yeah, yeah Searching called. for Sugar Man. It's oh, okay. very, very good. Uh, in, in 30 seconds, uh, a guy in Detroit, in inner city of Detroit, back in maybe the 70s or something, I don't uh, know. Earlier than that, I think. I think uh, records a couple of albums that are amazing if you listen to them now. It's like very Bob Dylan esque. Okay. Mm-hmm. He disappears. Uh, the album really goes nowhere, and he disappears. Somehow the album finds its way to South Africa and becomes incredibly popular, as in the most popular yeah. album. Like he's and a legend in he South becomes, Africa. Yeah. He becomes a star and a legend in South Africa. And, but the story is that he blew his head off. The, the story that somehow circulates is that he killed himself in, on stage in Detroit, and that's what makes him more legendary. Uh-huh. I don't know. Should we give? I guess we shouldn't give away the well, end. We've kind of already given it away. So they, they yeah. F- spoiler alert. Fast forward two minutes if you want. Um, they find him. He's still alive mm. in Detroit. Oh wow! And yeah. he has no idea that he's a star in South Africa. That's really and cool. And so they take him to South Africa, and he does starts doing concerts there. It's very very cool. Oh, and, that's and awesome. And he becomes a, a legend. Really, here, like so in North America. That uh, that album, uh, Sugar Man, was uh, was like my go to for about a year. What's yeah. it really? Oh, I, pl- I played it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the songs are good. Sugar yeah, man. in a bo- Yeah, sugar man. Won't you help me? Cause I'm tired of this lonely scene. Okay, sorry. That's, it's very good. <laughs> very good. Um, anyway, check so out uh, Lester, the check sugar out, man check of out, Ethiopia. Check out. She- <laughs> There's a lot of songs about drugs on there. I think Rodriguez yes. is into it. But a very beautiful, <laughs> very wonderful story. Um, check out Searching for Sugar Man, even though we've now told you the entire plot. What you watching? No, <laughs> that's why you got to insert that. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, what's the Urban Dictionary things? Puffy has seven more minutes that we get through before we the bail on him. bus is starting to purr. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right, so I, I gathered a couple of uh, Urban Dictionary uh, words here that you've are You've been used. doing a lot of research for this yeah. pod, yeah, by the way. This is the much. most prepped you've been. Yeah, While I was just, in Ethiopia, yeah. you did nothing but prep this pod. Absolutely. And look at us now. <laughs> <laughs> really humming this week. 
Uh, I picked out a bunch of uh, terms I found in line that have to do with uh, dating in the year 2020. Ooh. So these are commonly used on the dating ghosting. scene. Ghosting. I know what ghosting means. Yes, yes I do know what ghosting well, is. Well, I don't have Puffy ghosting ghosts on ghosts me here. all the time. Since uh, two, of f- <laughs> two of four of us are actively in the dating pool right now. I mean, oh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, one of four, one of four. <laughs> well done. <laughs> uh, Hilarious. All right, so we'll start with dial toning. Okay. Yeah, dial you, do you know that one? Toning. I, do, I do not know this word. Okay. Uh, you, have, uh, you have a guess? I w- uh, okay, dial tone would usually happen when somebody hung, hangs, hangs up on up, somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but it's never quite that literal, right, in the dating no. world? So maybe that means you're you know, interrupting... At the end, something ends in the middle, dial toning. Maybe you're stopping, you're making out, you're making out, you're yeah. about to go like you're, you think third you're going to. Third base. Third base, and, and you boom, you get it shut down. Dial toned. Dial toned. No, initially I thought you were going to be a little closer. Lester, do you want to take a um, guess? I was going to say, honestly, somebody hangs up on you, that's it. But <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Who even used the phone? <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so dial toning is when you give someone your real number, they reach out to you, but you never reply. Oh, oh okay. okay. You're essentially giving them the dial tone. Isn't that kind there. of ghosting but, too? Is it a little yeah, bit? Oh no, bit. ghosting. You have a, you have a relationship yeah, and then you, you stop. Even, yeah, yeah, you, you stop, stop replying against yeah. the text messages. Okay. This, yes. So this one, you actually do give them your real number. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. What's the next one? All right. Let's go on to white clawing. White wow. clawing. So white claw is some kind of drink that the girls in the states like. Ooh, I know that. Look much. at you. I know wow. much, but I don't know much about it. I think it's a tonic of such some sort. Okay. So I think it's when you. Uh, Maybe it's sort of like when the, uh, what was it called, when you touch that drink and then you had to chug it. I think white clawing, if you touch the white claw, you got to chug it. <laughs> it's a dating thing. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's not a bar thing. And then you go on a date because you're a little bit friskier. <laughs> okay, so I would say white clawing is you're only going out, if, if you're right on your accurate thing, you're going out uh, only with like a group of girlfriends. There's no like solo time. Uh, the only, that's pretty good. You only see the guy when you're partying with the girls. Go ahead. I didn't, Two I didn't, wrongs so yeah. far already. So white clawing is staying with someone you find attractive, but otherwise you find them simple and boring. Ooh, Ooh that would many do. a white clawed on my <laughs> behalf. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you're attractive? Yes. Wow. Uh, you find you you find them attractive, and you stay with them even though they're s- they're simple boring and, and simple. Boring. Where's the mm-hmm. white claw reference? Yeah, I don't get it. I think you're wrong about the I drink. Think <laughs> no, because I think white claw is a simple and boring drink. But it's effective. Attractive. Attractive, too. Attractive. Okay. It's a nice drink to look at. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Interesting. Cool. Glamboozle. Oh, Ooh. man. I'm going to say this means when you look at a woman and she, she's all that, but she's, she's like, you're so mesmerized by her that you don't even care what's going on. That's what I think. I'm going to say that uh, from a woman's standpoint, she gets all uh, dolled up for the date. And then the guy doesn't show. I think it's if someone looks really attractive with makeup on, and then after you have sex with them, Ooh. they don't look that good. That, so you were glammed and then boozled. At that's the end. that's happened to me a lot. That's, wow. After I take my makeup Your off. Makeup. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So this is we actually got a winner here, and Ooh. it's Jimmy. What? Wow. It's when you get ready to go out, and then you receive a text from your date asking to cancel wow. or wow. reschedule. I was wow. proud until I so dressed up till with nowhere to go. I saw myself dancing. My yeah. celebration yeah. dance was yeah. really bad. Yeah. <laughs> you look like Chandler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was glamboozled once. Uh, I remember this girl, and I can't remember her name, but I kind of had the hots for. Her. You remember yeah. everyone's name from your yeah. This youth. one I can't. Re- this one I can't remember. Well, she glamboozled them, That's and why. she invited. She finally seemed to take an interest. We talked on the phone a couple of times, and then she invited me over, and then then she called and said she could. She wasn't feeling well. Ooh. And then my buddy Dave Shaw, one of my Jamaican friends, uh, who he <laughs> always knew what was going on, right? Yeah. He sounds like, hey, James, man, that chick, man, forget about her. I went over. The, she was at a party last night. I was at. <laughs> <laughs> she glamboozled. She, was, she yeah. was making out with a guy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she was sick. She told me she was sick. Ah, uh, Jimmy. Of course, get he, over here, man. Of she course, he was she, probably that guy. <laughs> <She> glamboozled you. <laughs> yeah. So I just don't look around for who that guy was. By the way, that's not me trying to do a Jamaican accent. That's my buddy Dave Shaw. That's what he talked. That's what he Jimmy. Talk. Jimmy. 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 Miss Shaw. Got to try that tiger bone. <laughs> 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 okay. Next. All right. Next one is cosplaying, but. 
cause as in C A U S E, oh. like the cause of something. Mm. So cause playing, mm. cause playing. Mm. This is a tough mm. one. To I get. think I think you, maybe a, the only thing I could think of is you're altering your um, you're altering your version or your view on something for a particular situation to fit a different situation. I was thinking something like that that maybe you try to appeal to someone. Like, let's say if Jimmy didn't really go to Ethiopia and he was trying to impress a girl by saying he went to Ethi- Ethiopia mm, or something like that, good, making yourself okay. seem uh, a little bit more worldly, yes. a little bit more, that's, that's, a little more that, giving. Isn't that what I just said? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I said. I said okay, something okay, along okay, those let's lines. Just making yeah. sure. Let's make sure. I, I think mine was better. Jimmy had the yeah, better answer. Yeah, better answer. Yeah. Mine was yeah. better answer. But like Alex me. Trebek would say, no, Lester, yes, Jimmy, you win it all. What do you think? I have no idea. Puff's got 30 seconds left. All right, so uh, you guys are wrong. Uh, Cosplaying is when a former date contacts you well after the fact to ask you for an unrelated favor. Ooh. Mm. Happened lots of times. (laughs) (laughs) This guy's made a lot of moving trips. You've been around a lot, haven't you? Man, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I had an Mm ex-girlfriend, and we had had broken up. We had been broken up for quite some time. Mm-hmm. And then she ha- had the nerve to call me to ask me to see if I could get tickets for her for something through TSN. That's a cold one. The tickets thing is a pr- you, is you the, ticket, her, is the tickets thing a problem seat. for you? Uh, a problem for me in a sense. Yeah, I get the tic- tickets. The tickets thing is a big oh, problem. People, for people me. always asking me. Yes. No. 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 Not always. Okay. So I get it a lot. And what people don't understand is I don't. First of all, I have to go on TV. Let's say it's Leafs tickets. Yeah. They think that I just have this endless supply that I can get 20 tickets to any game. Mm-hmm. I don't get any Leafs tickets. You know, I once know. in a while our bosses will invite us to the box or whatever. Mm-hmm. But we go on TV and criticize the Leafs yes, or exactly. the Senators or the sure. Jets or the yeah. Oilers or whatever team that yep. is. So I can't then get free tickets from them. No, I do have some scruples. You know what yeah, I mean? It does yeah. work that way. I, uh, you know, I haven't white clawed uh, anybody in a while. <laughs> <laughs> is that an appropriate reference? I don't know. <laughs> I, I forget what it meant. What was your question, Stoff? You asked something. About you were asking something about the tickets. I think. Oh, I, I said you must have got her horrible seats. Did <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to go, Puffy? Uh, let me let me ways. Oh, ways and see how long it takes. Yeah. All right. Well, what do we have any more? Well, while he's, while he's wazing, we'll do one more. Okay. Uh, the term is flea bagging. Ooh. Now I have watched the show Fleabag, which is a everyone's uh, talking about that show. So I really enjoyed it. It I've was it, uh, it was about uh, I watched about four episodes. Brooksy wasn't into it; she was falling asleep, so I never went back to it. But very funny, yeah. very funny British kind of sitcom. Oh, nice, so, like The Office. But I don't know what the term. What the yeah, kind of no. It's it's about a girl, and she's just crazy, and she talks to the camera and things, and she goes through a relationship. It's quite so like The Office, except with a girl. Mm, yeah, I guess. Not really like The Office, okay? <laughs> I mean, but it's good. Is she like Ricky Gervais? <laughs> no, she's not like Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Fleabag, highly recommend. Fleabag. Uh, fleabagging would be... Anything related to... Get it, point. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to say that you... Uh, it's. I'm going to go with a fairly literal interpretation about... Uh, having uh, a date or a relationship where you just go to like cheap places, cheap motels or whatever, and you know the girl or the guy is expecting more, and that's where you always meet. You'll never go anywhere. I say than that. I say it's you've been on a bit of a dating slump, uh-huh. and so you drop your standards a bit, like the flea market. Ooh, interesting. And go flea bagging, right? As uh, Tanya did when she. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm going to say that it is close to what Poppy's saying, but uh, I guess it's going to be a lifestyle choice. Right now, I can't afford stuff, so I'm flea bagging. Oh, okay. You know? I like that. that could be a song. Yeah. Yo, flea man, I'm flea bagging. Flea bagging. Because right, so. <laughs> I'm flea. I'm flea bagging. <laughs> I want to ride out to some cheap motel room. I want to bang you. On some bloody carpet. <laughs> Alrighty, so that is not what flea bagging is. <laughs> Puffy was somewhat close. Woo! Flea bagging is constantly dating the wrong type of person for you. Oh, wow. okay. I guess it is a bit of a slump. Yes. Okay, yes. that's fair enough. Okay. Uh, how was your? Uh, what was your wazing? How long? Uh, Three oh nine. I get there. And what time do you have to get there? Three fifteen. Okay, so we can Sounds finish good. our last segment. We wanted yep. to do uh, a version of what you watching before we leave. What you watching? Just between you and me, what you're streaming on your TV? Let Urban Dictionary. What you're watching? 
Aside from the tempo, there's really no similarities to those songs outside of the <laughs> the tempo. I'm just gonna say that. All myself. I know is that's my favorite. What you watching? That's yeah, it's my number one of Lester's hits. Nice. Well, I'm a weak that was guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jimmy. Good. Uh, I love the classics. Uh, I like what you're watching. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that uh, Freaky Pigs, uh, that one, yeah. things that Twitter. I saw on Twitter has always been my favorite. I watched uh, some uh, Ethiopian uh, dramas. They were they were hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were they were. I have no idea what the hell was going on on them, but it would just be the same people that I saw. You know, the guy yeah. in the local village, and they were having arguments, and it was like Coronation Street or something, but with but all Ethiopia. Ethiopian characters. Nice, nice. fascinating. Um, mm. Okay, uh, is somebody going to perk up? I tried to watch Jack Ryan finally last night, but well, that's I, on the uh, I fell Amazon, asleep. Right? Fell asleep four minutes. Jack on. Ryan or Jack Reacher? Jack Ryan. Jack Reacher's Tom Cruise. Jack Ryan is the guy from The Office. John Krasinski. Thank you. Okay. Well done. I, would, I hadn't seen Jack Reacher yet, so I want to see Jack Reacher. Uh, really? really? If you like Cruise, they're okay. They're really? B, they're good B-movies, Reacher. Really? Yeah, I think Jack Reacher's good B-movies. Um, right. What do you want to talk about the Aaron Hernandez docs? Or is this well, serious? That, uh, it is serious, and it, it's been getting a lot of hype online. So mm-hmm. uh, Is it on right now? Like yeah, it just it? came out. Yeah. Uh, so, would you guys watch it? Are you looking forward to I it? I feel anyway? like I know the whole story. Yeah, unless they had like video evidence of the murders. Well, we know he did it. You, you've seen the video evidence. The guy walked in with the gun from the. He did the first murders. He needed like the ones all. in Florida, like the the ones where he shot the guy. When yeah, he, he did that too. You know, yeah. he did that too, right? I I would I would watch and I would say that. I mean, I'm obviously if I, obviously it's, it's morbid curiosity at this point, but it just I find it fascinating that this guy and apparently he did not. You know, you hear stories all the time. Oh, he came from a bad neighborhood, whatever. He did not come from that at all. As far as I as far as I understand, with with him, so he sort of gravitated to that type of lifestyle. Beyond that, and here he is; he's making forty million dollars. He's on a Super Bowl winning team. Yeah. Why would you do that? You know, well, CTE that's, is what, the, that's one of the things they're saying. That's what they're saying. Yeah, but but true. I think he looked like he was a bad guy. A lot of guys that. have CTE. He also, I not too many guys murdered. Suffered from a lot of paranoia and stuff like mm-hmm. that. He yeah, obviously he, was a damaged soul. I don't think he. Guys, the, the the question you just asked, it's not. There's no rational answer to it, right? No, Why yeah. you would be that way, unless you're just a bad guy, he or you might have, be a bad guy. Um, the one thing, and I hate I hate spreading bad information, so I might be wrong on this, but I listened to an Aaron Hernandez podcast, uh, and I believe that if you s- commit suicide while your case is under appeal, that the conviction is quashed. I heard yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. which is so to he's me, never convicted. He's of never the, convicted. Yeah. To me, that would really bother me as families of victims. Oh, okay, hundred percent. I yeah. think that's a horrible rule. It's a terrible yeah. rule. I think it is. A bad I rule. think it's based on just not wanting to waste um, this I legal, guess, yeah, tax mm, money or whatever. Yeah. It but is it's the to same with the, the Je- it's the same with the Jeffrey Epstein thing, though. Then uh, you know he would have been convicted. And or did he get convicted? But he was convicted before. I oh, think. was he? Mm-hmm. And the the oh, ones another, that another tr- another in like two thousand eight, he got convicted. Of yeah, the ones for Aaron that are they are not convicted. He wasn't convicted of those yet. Right. So he stood oh, no. trial for two more murders. Epstein got the sweetheart deal where he got out after like nothing. Basically, yeah. he Speak. basically served a home home sentence or whatever. I, yeah. I'm I'm curious to see if you there is a if, if there is a Juan hey, Epstein uh, documentary. Juan, Juan Epstein. Puerto Rican Jew from Mr. Cotter. Mr. Cotter. Yeah. Mr. Cotter. <laughs> I love that. Anybody in our audience under about 40 wouldn't love that, but I, I love that. The eight part Netflix series on Juan Epstein. Juan Epstein. The, the Puerto Rican Jew. <laughs> Puffy, uh, have a great time. Thanks, uh, hey, man, have, have fun. Yes. I think we're pretty much done anyway, but uh, Puffy's off to the tournament in Ottawa. And Go thank, Ticats. Thank you for your patience, everybody, with through the World Juniors and my trip to Africa for us not being as regular as as per always. Thanks for listening, yes. everybody, to the Rubber Boots podcast. Uh, and uh, thanks to um, all you... P- if anybody has any more information, any other Canadians about the Rubber Boots guy, uh, please let us know. We'll talk to you next week. Yeah, I'm going on a vacation, too. Oh, where are you oh, going? Carousel. Cause I'm, oh, because I'm, I'm off next week, but I'll try to figure out a way to come in. We'll get a podcast done. Is this still a podcast or is this just a meeting? We're just, we're just talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. We should wrap this up. <laughs> hey. How are ya? I got a question that I really wanna ask ya. Wait. Don't hang up. I need to know so I'm gonna try and push my luck.
Are you wearing your wobble boots tonight? Are they purple, yellow, green, blue, black, or white? Are you wearing your wobble boots tonight? And do you like the dunk tank at the fair? I know it's a little strange. My obsession with your choice of footwear in the rain. I know that you're on TV, but I need you to put your boots up on the desk for me. Are you wearing your Hawaiian boots tonight? Are they purple, yellow, green, blue, black, or white? Are you wearing your Hawaiian boots tonight? And do you like the dark bank at the fair? This is the part they call the bridge A bridge has water under it With rubber boots you can wade in the water Just don't fall in Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? Are they purple, yellow, green, blue, black or white? Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? And do you like a dunk tank at the fair? Do you like the dunk tank at the fair? The dunk tank, the dunk tank at the fair. Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight? No, seriously. Are you wearing your rubber boots? Don't hang up. Please. Somebody. Hey. Hey. Anyone?